from the pressures of emergency medicine at Mitchell's Plain Hospital in the Western Cape to the horrors of giving birth on the floor in Daung Hospital in the Northwest. Our health series has explored it all. Now we head to the Eastern Cape. If you've ever tried to call an ambulance during an emergency, you'll know that it's a vital life-saving service. But for many people in the Eastern Cape, especially those living in rural villages, well-equipped functioning ambulances are something of a myth. The oxygen is too small and large. This is the shocking state of ambulances that are meant to serve 7 million people in the Eastern Cape. In town after town, village after village, people tell us the same story. No ambulances. Access to emergency medical services and healthcare is enshrined in our constitution, but it seems for many people living in rural parts of the Eastern Cape, these rights do not apply to them. Ochamouth on the wild coast is about as remote as you can find, with East London a four-hour drive south, Ntata, a hundred kilometers north. The availability of an ambulance here can become a matter of life and death. Nosintu Ntenteni grew up here, and in September last year, she really needed an ambulance. She was about to have her first child. <laughs> She still needed to get to a hospital over an hour's drive away. Can you imagine in our bed or dead road, if somebody is pregnant, it's bumping at the back of the buggy. And of course, some they gave the bed in back of the buggy. Community leader Pumzilam Sako has been part of a desperate struggle to bring medical services here. In 2013, we went all the way to East London. The Human Rights Commission panel was there. We explained how life is critical here. The Human Rights Commission uh, did the report. It tells you exactly what's supposed to be done. I can tell you that none of them has happened. The 2015 Human Rights Commission report detailed the shocking state of EMS for the province's rural communities and recommended improving the conditions of the ambulance fleet and their response. And they said people deserved better. People are dying while there are ambulances which are supposed to come and there is no hope. Over 300 kilometers inland at Fort Beaufort, I meet Mzamani Mgwantashe, a passionate EMS worker for over seven years. Mzamani risked dismissal speaking to us because for him, the situation has become unbearable. We are communicating with Yasa Farish because of the ambulance has no equipment. And Dr. Alaga says this is covers around 20 villages with two ambulances. But Mzamani, have you ever been in a position where you went to go try and help someone and you didn't have equipment? Can you maybe explain to me what happened? Yeah, the call the call big yeah from Victoria. It's yeah it's London. They transfer the patient, they bring an oxygen, the patient that poop in Galen. Because no oxygen. They bring an oxygen. We've tried to prioritize EMS services and do the best we can with the resources at our disposal. Throughout the years, the Eastern Cape Department of Health has been dogged by maladministration and corruption, repeatedly coming close to collapse. Appointed a year ago, the new head of department, Dr. Rolene Wagner, says they're barely getting by. Across the years, the budget allocations to the health department in the Eastern Cape has decreased. There are 447 vehicles that we have within our fleet. Within those, we have around 324 that are operational. 
even if you have an operational ambulance, you need sufficient crew to man the ambulances. We have around 2,000, just over 2,200 staff. The National Department of Health standards for emergency medical services make it clear that ambulances should be adequately equipped at all times, but it's seldom the case here. Okay. Section unit. Entonox and gauge. So basic thing like oxygen, Aiko, and that's obviously important if somebody's in danger. Yes, you open the windows, so that must get... You uh, open the windows the for windows, oxygen? Yeah, so <laughs> <small of manu, laughs> we are improvising, mm -hmm. you see. So that is why we, we manage. But Zaman, you can't even... You can't improvise, improvise oxygen. Opening windows does not help. And when you have cases of pregnant women? Then go out was a cut up was a nazi surgical plate, it was a cut. Surgical plate, surgical plate, surgical plate or cut. I was a number ten to peg. It's either we as an apes pegel as a cut up as pegel or can you buy corn and run until um cut again. When we spoke to some of the workers, some of the um, ambulances that, they, that they've been given do not have equipment. I mean, a simple thing like an oxygen tank in, in, in one of the ambulances was nowhere to be found. Some of the stories move me to tears as well. So I understand that when you're passionate and you want to provide of your best, you need the tools of trade to do so. And, and we, we made an undertaking, and, and I've been quite unequivocal as the accounting officer. If they are reporting it and it is not being attended to, they must please escalate it so that we can assist. Zamani is one of more than 200 members of the National Education, Health and Allied Workers Union who for the last four months have been reporting for duty but have not been responding to emergency calls as a protest. Under the cover of darkness, they invite us to join a night shift in the small town of Alice, 20 kilometers away from Fort Beaufort. I am met by a shocking sight. So these are some of the working and living conditions that the emergency services guys are complaining about. I mean, if you look at this place, it's unbelievable that they've got no place to relax, no place to rest while they're waiting for calls. Workers here tell me that three of their five ambulances are idle and the other two have just come back from a repair workshop and are still not equipped, making them useless. So the idea was to hang out with emergency services workers and see the pressures and the conditions under which they work. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen because one, the area that we're in doesn't have networks, so they can't get any cell phone communication. And the press and talk that they use also doesn't work. These devices rely on patchy networks in the area. A lot of the time when emergency services go, goes on strike, people from the outside will look and say that you're selfish, you're putting people's lives at risk. What do you say to that statement? Mm. So you can be put to blame yes. for equipment that's not there? Mm. This situation has left many chronically ill patients like Mteteli Majombolwana and his sister, also his caregiver, Patelwa, in crisis. Okay. Shockingly, Mzamani alleges that in trying to meet the quality assurance test to declare their ambulances fit for service delivery, the Department of Health is cutting corners. department is a checklist. equipment why do they take it out? The allegations that are on the ground is that ambulances are fitted with the equipment. Yeah. Past, 
then removed and taken to a next one to a next one to a next one so that they can look like yeah. they have been certified to be able to be operational for me that is fraud i view it as fraud as well and so we've actually invest we've directed that an investigation be launched to to determine how the licensing exercise was done and if there was fraud we definitely will hold them um, uh, there will be consequences that will follow at the same time when we did ask the explanation that was given was that the equipment is put into the vehicle but there isn't enough space to store all of the equipment in the vehicle or because of the risk of theft Wagner insists she will revive emergency care in the Eastern Cape our plan is within the next 10 years to systematically address all of the, the gaps that we have within in EMS. But until then, people like Mteteli and Nosindu will have to make other expensive and often risky plans when seeking critical emergency care. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.